And joining us on the line right now is Joe DeGeneva, legal analyst, former U.S. Attorney to the District of Columbia. Joe, good morning to you. Good morning. All right, I want to start off with the topic of Benghazi. Two things that have caught my attention this morning. Uh, the Benghazi Committee has officially requested that a former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton surrender her email server. Well, you know, the Benghazi Committee already has about 300 emails that Mrs. Clinton turned over. And in the New York Times this morning is a, is a story about what these emails show. But here's a little line that caught my attention. They show that Mrs. Clinton's top aides at times corresponded with her about State Department matters from their personal email accounts, raising questions about her recent assertions that she made it her practice to email aides at their government addresses so that the messages would be preserved in compliance with federal record-keeping regulations. In the limited number of emails that have been turned over, it seems that Ms. Clinton has told us a big whopper about that. Well, there's no question that um, everything that Hillary Clinton has done with regard to her emails and the server are in violation of the law. And all of the nonsense from uh, all of her defenders, Lanny Davis on down, uh, are just wrong. Uh, since 1995, it has been the law that you have to preserve electronic records. That said, once that server was in her house and she was conducting government business on it, it was no longer her server. That server belongs to the United States government, and every piece of information on it, when, it belongs to the government. When she deleted those documents, the emails, she broke the law. She not only broke civil law in terms of the Federal Records Act, she may very well have violated federal criminal well, law. where's the investigation? Which, I well, beg your pardon? I said, where's the investigation? You're, uh, I think you're right. That's a very good right. question, Brian. The reason we're having this conversation is hopefully some people are listening, like the FBI director, Cardinal Comey. Perhaps he should start something. <laughs> they didn't have any problem starting an investigation of a congressman from Illinois over some spending. And here we have a cabinet member admitting in public that she has destroyed government documents and is going to fight turning over documents to the committee. This is actually quite outrageous. And if, if the FBI doesn't do something about this server and about the relationship between the deleted emails and the Clinton Foundation money and the conflict of interest over money coming in while she was Secretary of State, it will be a disgrace. The FBI has a duty at this point to begin a preliminary inquiry into her conduct during her tenure as Secretary of State. Uh, let me ask you, Joe, you just mentioned something, and I just want to focus in on it so everybody understands it. If she claims, I only deleted my own personal emails from that server, you're saying that that is, in fact, a violation of the law because that server, because she was conducting government business on it, was government property. It wasn't for her to delete. That is absolutely correct. She had no authority, right, privilege, entitlement to delete anything from that server. This is what is so outrageous about the fact that the Democrats continue to defend this, saying she has turned everything over. You listen to people like Adam Schiff, this guy from California. The Democrats are really classic apparatchiks now. They are quite an embarrassment. Uh, if, they were on the, if they were investigating Republican, I can assure you they, be, they would be going crazy over the possession of this server by someone at their residence. She, there's just no doubt yeah. that she's broken the law. The question is, how bad is it? And until the FBI gets in there and starts investigating with the assistance of the Justice Department, we won't know. We have no, for example, does she consider all Clinton Foundation information to be personal? If right. she does, it's all been deleted. Well, right. I, th I think these are great questions, and I think you make a great point, Joe, that they, they, they're not a moment passed before the FBI opened an investigation into this congressman, Aaron Schock. I mean, not, not, not even a, a nanosecond passed, and they were ready to jump on that, and we hear absolutely nothing about something that I think, you're right, is a this violation is, this, of the law. This, this is absolutely disgraceful, what's happening. Yeah. This is a double standard involving Hillary Clinton. With the, with the federal government bureaucracy and the FBI and the Justice Department that is staggeringly obnoxious. This, if this were any other citizen, that server would have been seized. There would have been a fight over it, perhaps, in the courts, but that would have been underway. Gowdy has set the stage for a fight because eventually he's going to have to issue a subpoena for the server and its contents, and then her lawyers are going to fight. So it's going to end up in federal court anyway. But this is just... It's just beyond belief that she's been able to get away with this with that horrible news conference. Joe, can I circle back to this Aaron Schock thing? You say yeah. that you know you're comparing it to the Hillary Clinton situation. I'd like to compare it to a, a, another situation. Why? Why is Aaron Schock now a former congressman, and and uh, uh, Charlie Rangel, 
is still considered a, a uh, you know respected member of the of the House of Representatives. Didn't Charlie Rangel do things a lot worse than Aaron? And I'm not defending well, Aaron Shock, but it seems like there's not a consistency here in how well, the House polices not. itself. You, you know, Charlie Rangel was a tax cheat. Um, you know, he lied about this stuff on his official disclosure forms. Never been charged with a crime. Still owes taxes. I mean, Al Sharpton is a tax cheat, uh, former F- DEA drug informant, uh, a criminal. Uh, he, he continues to have a show on MSNBC. If you think there's not a double standard uh, in this city over this stuff, you've got to be kidding. Of course, it helps that Wrangles black. Obviously, there's this reluctance to engage in investigations of black officials. Doesn't uh, it also if help, Loretta though? Lynch were in office, she'd feel more comfortable about does, it. Doesn't it also help, though, that Republican leadership just attends to sort of not even want to go there and protect any of their own and when they get into ethical problems? Yeah, but, you know, they're pretty good about getting rid of they They, they, they got rid of Aaron Schock pretty fast. They made it very right. clear. And he Michael was, Grimm in New York. I mean, that's two already gone this year, and they didn't get any support from leaders. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying they deserve support, but we could, why, again, the Democrats seem to get away with supporting their corrupt well, officials. You know what? The Democrats run the media, at least. <laughs> for the moment, but the media is changing. Perhaps that won't be true in the future. All right, so Loretta Lynch uh, is uh-huh. the president's choice to be the next attorney general of these United States, and that nomination seems to have been hung up a bit uh, up in the Senate, uh, and a vote is uh, has not been yet scheduled. Uh, some have said that this has something to do with her race. Some Democrats have said you've taken her to the back of the bus. Yeah, Your that, thoughts? Was Dick, that was Dick Durbin on right. the floor of the Senate last week, and he should be embarrassed and ashamed of himself. Uh, this has well, nothing Dick to Durbin do with... has no shame. Oh, well, go, that goes without saying. Uh, Durbin is a classic apparatchik. I mean, he's from Chicago. He's really quite a sleazy guy. Um, this notion, it, it, what's happening is very simple. There's a human trafficking bill on the floor. The Republicans had an amendment in there dealing with the, none of the funds being used for abortion, using the traditional Hyde language. The Democrats started filibustering. They are the ones that are preventing the human trafficking bill from being passed. Let's remember this. It's the Democrats, once again who are filibustering. And because they're filibustering, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, Republican majority leader, said we will not have a vote on Loretta Lynch until the human human trafficking bill is passed. That is classic Senate strategy. It has nothing to do with race. And it's how, how, how poorly the Democrats see themselves and how bereft of arguments that they would shift to, to race on the floor. By the way, Durbin, while he was saying that, was sitting sitting next to him with Harry Reid, who was laughing during the presentation. This is this is how bad Senate leadership on the Democratic side has become. This is a joke to them. Saying, accusing people of using race to stop a na- uh, nomination is now a joke to them. Yeah. This is how insulting the Democratic leadership in the Senate is. Joe, can I just, I only have 30 seconds, but you just said the next step with the Hillary Clinton thing is that they're going to see each other in court. Who's seeing who in court? Who has standing here? Who's going to force the issue? Well, uh, Judicial Watch and a whole bunch of other people oh, the FOIA, who, the who FOIA have reports. filed Freedom of Information Act lawsuits are going to get several things from Hillary and her immediate staff. They're going to get affidavits from all of them under oath Got it. about what they did and didn't do. And I predict that within three months, Hillary will be testifying in a federal court under oath about all of this wow. because... These, ca- these judges are not going to be happy about the fact that they lied to courts about what they knew and where the emails were. There you go. Joe DeGeneva in the tank for Martin O'Malley for president. Thanks, Joe. Is he okay, just guys. mocking my Irish people there? He, he is. He may he, have been. That's okay. I don't mind.